Welcome to my channel. Let's see the proof for Euclid's algorithm. Euclid was a great Greek mathematician who lived around 300 BC. He is now regarded as the father of geometry. In his work called The Elements, he has left these notes. From this diagram, the present day Euclid's algorithm has been derived. This is one of the oldest algorithms that is still in use today. I'll explain about this diagram in detail shortly. Assume A greater than B. According to this algorithm, GCD of A and B is exactly same as the GCD of the smaller number B and A mod B. A mod B is nothing but the reminder that you get when you divide A by B. In order to find the GCD of any two numbers, you have to apply this algorithm again and again until you hit zero. After which you can easily conclude that GCD of any number and zero is the same number. When you first look at Euclid's notes, you can see that he has used GCD of A and B is same as the GCD of B and A minus B. This was then improved and replaced with modular operator. Let's quickly see the implementation of this algorithm with an example. If you want more details about the implementation, you can refer to the video that I have linked in the description box. Let's take the numbers 161 and 210. According to this algorithm, GCD of any two numbers is same as the GCD of the smaller number. Here, the smaller number is 161 and big number mod small number. We know that modulo is nothing but the reminder that you get when you divide 210 by 161. So 210 divided by 161 is 1 times 161 and the reminder is 49. So this is same as the GCD of 161 and 49. Again this is the GCD of the smaller number 49 and you should find 161 mod 49. So divide 161 by 49 you will have 14. Now this is same as GCD of the smaller number 14 and 49 mod 14. So divide 49 by 14 you will get the reminder as 7. This is same as the GCD of 7 and 14 mod 7. So 14 by 7 is 2 without any reminder. So we are done here. GCD of any number and 0 is the same number. So GCD of 161 and 210 is 7. If you look at these steps, you can see that this algorithm is helping us in reducing the numbers into smaller and smaller numbers until we hit 0. Let's get to the proof part. So what should we prove? Let's divide the proof into three parts. First, let's see why GCD of any number and 0 is the same number. Then let's get to the core part of Euclid's algorithm which states that GCD of A and B is same as GCD of B and A minus B. From this we can finally prove the modern form of Euclid's algorithm which states that GCD of A and B is same as the GCD of B and A mod B. Why GCD of any number and 0 is the same number? Let's take an example of GCD of 7 and 0. We know that 1 and 7 are the factors of 7. What about the factors of 0? By definition, factor of a number perfectly divides that number. Is 1 a factor of 0? Yes, 0 by 1 is 0. Is 2 a factor of 0? Yes, 0 by 2 is 0. Is 1500 a factor of 0? Yes, 0 by 1500 is 0. 0 by any number is 0. So all natural numbers starting from 1 are the factors of 0. From this we can say that 1 and 7 are the common factors of 7 and 0. So the GCD of these two numbers has to be 7. So if you generalize this, if you take any number B, 1 and B are definitely the factors of B. There could be some other factors, we don't care about those. We know that B is the greatest factor of B. We also know that all natural numbers are factors of 0. So B has to be somewhere here. B is a common factor for both B and 0. 
we know that b is the greatest factor of b so b has to be the gcd of b and 0 so it's now very clear for us that the statement is true i find that reverse engineering is the best way to understand most of the algorithms it's not even that fair to use the term of reverse engineering for such a simple algorithm like this but still i mentioned it because what we are going to do is take some examples and calculate the gcd of those numbers first and then try to understand how this algorithm helps us in calculating that gcd let's take these four sets of numbers as our examples now calculate gcd of these numbers using any method of your choice since our proof involves a minus b let's see what is a minus b for these numbers i have just subtracted the numbers in the first row and have returned here Let's write down what we have done so far. We have assumed that GCD of A and B is G. We have to prove that GCD of B and A minus B is also equal to G. If you look at these examples, we can easily observe that A minus B is always a multiple of G. 36 is a multiple of 9, 16 is a multiple of 4, 66 is a multiple of 11 and 49 is also a multiple of 7. Let's write down the observation. We have only observed it with a few examples. That doesn't mean that it is always true. Let's try to prove it theoretically first. G is the GCD of A and B means that G is a divisor of A and B. In other words, you can say that A and B are multiples of G. A is some multiple of G and B is some other multiple of G. A minus B is then equal to Mg minus Ng or you can say M minus N into G. Remember that we have always assumed A is greater than B. If A is greater than B, M has to be greater than N. Only then, if you multiply m and n by some common integer, a can be greater than b. Since m is greater than n, you can for sure say that m minus n is some positive integer. If a minus b is some positive integer times the GCD of a and b, you can definitely say that a minus b is always a multiple of g. If you just rephrase this statement, you can say that G is a factor of A minus B. We also know that G is a factor of A and B. So you can say that G is a common factor of A, B and A minus B. I have just rephrased this sentence, so this is always true. But this doesn't mean that G is the greatest common factor for B and A minus B. Is G the only common factor of A, B and A minus B? No, there could be some other common factors for these three numbers. We know for sure that there is one which is common for all these three numbers and there could be some other numbers between 1 and G that are common factors for all these three numbers A, B and A minus B. But we really don't care about those numbers that are less than G. So our intention is to check if there is a possibility of a number greater than G that can be a common divisor of both B and A minus B. In order to prove that such a number cannot exist, I am making a statement that M and N are co-primes. Let's see if the statement is true or not. If you take our first example of 63 and 27 and try to find the GCD of this using ladder method. If you divide by 3, you have 21 and 9. If you again divide by 3, you have 7 and 3. You cannot divide any further because it's clear that there is nothing common between 7 and 3. So we stop here and just multiply the common factors and say that 3 into 3 is 9, so the GCD is 9. If you try to write A and B, that is 63 and 27 as a multiple of GCD you can see that 63 is 7 into 9 and 27 is 3 into 9. These two numbers where we stopped are nothing but our M and N. So if you take any example we will only stop our divisions when the two numbers that are left out do not have any common factors which means that 
they are coprimes if they are not coprimes we will not stop here we will just continue to divide and divide further until the numbers that are left out are coprimes so for any a and b in order to have g as the gcd m and n has to be coprimes so this statement is always true if m and n are not coprimes g cannot be the gcd at all and our initial assumption itself will be wrong if m and n are coprimes n and m minus n are also coprimes we are just talking about the inverse of what we have already discussed for our first point first let's take two numbers that are not coprimes in order to understand how this works say for example take 33 and 27 33 minus 27 is you can write 33 as 3 into 11 and similarly you can write 27 as 3 into 9 so this can be written as 3 into 11 minus 9 this is 3 into 2 so when you are able to write the individual numbers as a product of a common factor 3 you can also write the difference as a product of that common factor 3 that is what we already proved here if you take the two numbers like 7 and 3 that do not have any common factor at all then their difference can also be not written as a product of any of the common factors of these two numbers that is why if m and n are coprimes n and m minus n are also always coprimes so if you take these two statements n and m minus n do not have any common factors because they are coprimes so you cannot take out anything common in n and m minus n only if you can take out anything common between n and m minus n it is possible for you to multiply this g with that common factor and make it bigger since n and m minus n are coprimes there is no such possibility of making g bigger which means that g has to be the gcd of b and a minus b as well so we have proved this part that g is the gcd of b and a minus b we can also easily prove that gcd of a and a minus b is also equal to g but we only consider this because b is the smaller number what is the point in proceeding by taking the big number and the difference when the small number and the difference itself can give the same result after all our intention is to save time and effort so that is why we consider b in our algorithm instead of a before proceeding to the third part let's see what euclid has mentioned in his notes this will help you in visualizing what we have already learned and will also give you a very clear understanding of the modulo part of the proof that we are ready to prove on first look it's not very clear because euclid has mentioned everything in terms of fc here he has not given any definite length so let's substitute some value for fc you can take any value i'm just going to use 6 for easy understanding let's just assume that euclid was using two ropes we can name them as a b and c d since we have taken fc as 6 just substitute here he has used 10 fc and 7 fc which means this is um say 60 inches and uh, this is 42 inches euclid is probably curious about knowing what are all the possible lengths he can measure just by using these two ropes he is trying to measure the smaller rope into the bigger rope so he is just marking the length of the smaller rope into the bigger rope and naming that point as e since this is 60 and this is 42 this has to be 18 he now wants to measure this difference 18 into the smaller rope cd he first measures 1 ae into the smaller rope then realizes that there is a lot of rope left and measures one more ae into the smaller rope of 42 inches now there will be only 6 inches left he can now measure 3 cfs into ae after this there is no more rope left so euclid concludes that the gcd is 6 for this diagram you can say that gcd is fc or cf let's try to map whatever we have done now into our algorithm we took two ropes of length 60 and 42 these are the numbers for which we have to find the gcd this is a and this is b we first try to measure 42 into 60 42 can be measured in 60 only one time and the difference or the remainder is 18 
you are then trying to measure that difference into the smaller rope or the smaller number 42. You subtracted one 18 from 42 and you subtracted one more 18 from 42 and then you are left with 6. This is nothing but you are dividing 42 by 18 and the remainder is 6. In other words, 42 mod 18 is 6. And then when you try to measure that 6 into this smaller rope of 18, you are able to perfectly match it and you are left with no more rope which means that the remainder here is 0. So we concluded that the final length that we measured is our GCD. So it's very clear how we are making use of the difference here and when we use the difference successively, we are left with the remainder or the modulo. I'll discuss in detail about applications of GCD in measurements and extension of this particular concept. How this concept can be applied in measuring the lens, I'll link that video down in the description box. Let's move to the third part. We already know that GCD of A and B is same as the GCD of the smaller number B and A minus B, the difference between the two numbers. Let me take a very simple example, GCD of 70 and 20. So if you apply this rule, it is same as the GCD of the smaller number and their difference which is 50. Again, if you apply this rule, it will be the smaller number 20 and the difference is 30. Again, if you apply this, you will have 20 and the difference is 10. Now 10 became the smaller number, so you cannot take out any more 20. So what we did was we subtracted 120 from 70, again one more 20 from 70 and again one more 20 from 70 until the result became less than 20. So in general you can say that you can take as many B's as possible from A until the result is greater than B. When the result became less than B, you have to stop. If you just want to jump from this step to this step, you just want to take out as many 20s as possible from 70, right? In general, this is same as the GCD of B, comma A minus NB. N is just as many Bs as you can subtract from A. If you take a deeper look here, N is nothing but the quotient when you divide A by B. See here, 70 by 20, the quotient is 3. So that is why you are able to take 320s out of 70. A minus NB is nothing but the reminder that you get when you divide A by B. So instead of just doing repeated subtraction, we can just replace this and say that GCD of AB is same as the GCD of B and A mod B. Just look at it this way. Multiplication is nothing but successive addition. Similarly, division is nothing but successive subtraction. Here, we have a reminder hanging around and we are using that reminder instead of subtracting many times. It's as simple as that. Thank you for listening.